is is that is that is that the Prime Minister knows that the report of the Commissioner for Standards into cash for questions will be ready on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, Mr Speaker, recently a single mother with small children came to see me in Sheffield. She had with her a The, f the first point of recapitalisation was to save banks that would otherwise have collapsed. And we not only saved the world, uh, saved the banks and saved, saved, saved the banks and led the way. We not only saved the banks. Total spending uh, will continue to rise and it will be uh, at 0% rise in 2013-14. In 2011-12 in 2011-12 and 12-13 it will continue to rise. Order, order. The Prime Minister's answer must be heard. Prime Minister. I think that answer gets 0%. Now, I, I know how much he likes personalising politics, and I, I know, I, I know, I, I know, I, I know, I, I, I know. I, of course, I know how he hates. I know how he hates punch and Judy politics. <laughs> when it comes to real policy, when it comes to discussing the long-term future of this country, he is not. He is not even in a punch to real policy. When it comes to discussing the long-term future of this country, he is not. He is not even. I wish the Chadow Chancellor would occasionally shut up and listen to the answer. I don't know whether... Am I? Am I? I don't know whether... Am I? I will try and come... I don't know whether... Order! Order! Uh, other members can now follow the Prime Minister's advice to the Shadow Chancellor. We need a bit of order. The Prime Minister. I may be alone in finding him the most annoying person in modern politics, but I... I anyway, uh, I'm sure... No, no. I think... I've got a feeling the Leader of the Opposition will one day agree with me, but there we are. Um. He can embarrass him himself. He can disgrace his party, but what is intolerable is that he has cynically raised the hopes of hundreds and thousands yeah. of yeah. families. Yeah. You're a miserable pit squeak of a man, John! You're the finger away. Yeah. Order! Order! Before we go any further, I must ask the Honourable Gentleman to withdraw the term that I think he used. I think I heard the term pipsqueak. The Honourable Gentleman must withdraw that term. It's not appropriate. Out of death. What I'm doing, you leave this matter to me. Mr Tom Watson. Out of deference to you, Mr Speaker, I withdraw it. I'm grateful to the... Mr Speaker, the, uh, the House has noticed the 
Prime Minister's remarkable transformation in the last few weeks from Stalin to Mr. Beam. <laughs> The Prime Minister talks about salesmanship. We all know his brilliant salesmanship. This is the man that sold gold at the bottom of the market. That's the problem with the Prime Minister. He's got nothing to sell and he's useless at selling it. And while we're at it, I've got a bit more advice for him. This is the Prime Minister who went on American Idol with more makeup on than Barbara Cartland. This is the, the Prime Minister who sits in, sits in number 10 Downing Street. He sits... He sits in number 10 Downing Street, wondering... Order, order. Give him the opposition. He sits in... Oh, hold on. He sits in number 10 Downing Street, waiting for Shakira to call, waiting for George Clooney to come to tea. I got a bit of advice from him. Why doesn't he give up the PR and start being a PM? Yeah. For the EMA debate today, historically they have been vexed about how to pay for the EMA scheme. Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, if we are to have a credible debate, oh, I apologise, um, it is my tie to support the campaign against bowel cancer that was making that noise, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, it, it, is, it, is, it is a musical tie uh, that they were giving out. Order. Um, perhaps next time the gentleman will be more selective in the ties that he wears. <laughs> Um, in the chamber, and then we won't need the musical accompaniment. Your word of, words of wisdom, Madam Deputy Speaker, are taken on board, and I apologise to you. Um, if we are to have a... I also thank the whole House for the good wishes on the birth of my second son, Samuel, uh, and in particular to the Prime Minister and his wife, Samantha, for their very generous gifts, and also the Deputy Prime Minister uh, and his... Uh, and, uh, I'll keep the gift secret. Well, let me uh, welcome the Right Honourable Gentleman back and congratulate him again on the birth of, of baby Samuel. Um, I very much know what it's like, the, the noise, the mess, the chaos, trying to get the children to shut up. I'm sure it was lovely to have two weeks away from it all. Um, <laughs> and he's, uh, he's very well... ...for the post, to see how the post of a permanent president of the European Council could also evolve is not difficult even for the humblest student of politics. And it is, of course, rumoured that one Tony Blair may now be interested in the job. Now, if that makes us uncomfortable on these benches, just imagine how it is viewed in Downing Street. And I... I must warn ministers opposite that having tangled with Tony Blair across this dispatch box on literally hundreds of occasions, I know his mind almost as well as they do. I can tell them that when he goes off to a major political conference of a centre-right party and simultaneously refers to himself as a socialist, he is on manoeuvres. And he is... <laughs> he is busily... He is busily building coalitions as only he can. And we can all picture the scene at a European Council sometime next year. Picture the face of our poor Prime Minister as the name of Blair is placed in nomination by one President and Prime Minister after another. The look of utter gloom on his face. The nauseating, glutinous praise oozing from every head of government. The rapid revelation of a majority view agreed behind closed doors when he was, as usual, excluded. Never would he regret more no longer being in possession of a veto. The famous... <laughs> the famous drop jaw almost hitting the table as he realises there is no option but to join in. And then the awful moment when the motorcade of the President of Europe sweeps into Downing Street. 
the gritted teeth and bitten nails, the Prime Minister emerging from his door with a smile of intolerable anguish, the, the choking sensation as the words Mr. President are forced out of his mouth. And then, then once in the cabinet room, the melodrama of when will you hand over to me all over again. There is, of course, a serious point here, Madam Deputy Speaker.